Hi everyone, this is Kelly Ann with Church Windows. I'm the presenter for today's uh, webinar. We're going to take a look at the inactive field, uh, formerly was called Reason for Termination. Before we begin though, um, right now on your screen it's showing you how to use the GoToWebinar toolbar. If, you're, if it's your first time using it, hopefully you saw the, uh, the little pre-show here. Um, if you missed it, it's really easy to use. You can click the little orange or reddish colored arrow on the side of it to minimize it down if it's blocking what I'm showing you. Um, or to open it back up, you can click on that little arrow and that will open it back up. Um, I'm not going to unmute people because within that panel there is a question area. And if you open that up, um, you can type questions in there as I'm showing you things. Um, you might want to hold off until the end with your questions because frequently your question gets answered as we work our way through the, the material of what I'd like to show you. Um, but I do have Ross also in the room today. And if you do have questions while I'm showing material, um, he'll be keeping an eye on the question panel and answering those. Uh, but then, again, at the end, I will open the floor and read the questions out loud so everybody can hear them and answer them for everyone. Um, another thing before we begin, today's webinar, let me get rid of all the um, movie there. Today's webinar we took from, or I'm using some material from one of our training workbooks. Um, now, you, it's not a requirement. You don't need the book to to follow along, but if, if you have the book or if you're interested in uh, where you can find this written, um, this is from one of our training workbooks. Actually, there's a little bit in two different books. Um, so I just clicked on training workbooks, and if you look, there's a whole list of the different workbooks for the different modules with the different topics as well. Um, portion of this is from Membership 101, pages 27 and 28. Um, in this workbook, we discuss the different individual fields on the, the people records, and it briefly tells you about the inactive field. Then in Membership 102, on page 7 and 8, the specific topic, when a family or someone leaves the church, uh, that topic also I'm going to be looking at. Actually, I'm going to refer more to that because it just has a little bit more information than the other. The, the first one is just more showing you the fields um, in the workbook, um, whereas in M102, it tells you a little bit more. So I'm going to keep my eyes on the material I have for M102, and we're going to look at the new inactive status. So I think I've covered all the pre-webinar things. It seems like I'm only doing them once or twice a month, so my memory is not as good as when I was younger. All right, um, so I went ahead and I opened membership just to have it open and save us time. We'll go ahead and click on people. That will open our people database, gathering the data. And um, while we're waiting, just a few words about the inactive status. Um, you can delete records if people don't have giving. Um, then you can delete records, and if you'd like to, you, you definitely can delete a record. But if it's not a duplicate, if it's a real record of someone, then oftentimes churches like to keep a history of that. Um, and oftentimes you might need for, you know, regional conference or for end-of-the-year reports. You need to track those people who've left the church. Um, if you delete them, then their record's not there anymore. But the inactive field, that will allow you to give them a reason why you mark them inactive and also enter a date as to when you uh, mark them inactive or when they became inactive. Um, and, and their record is kind of hidden behind the scenes. It won't show up on your list, your labels, your reports, unless you specifically say, I want inactive people on this report. And on most of the reports, there's a little checkbox for inactive um, where you can indicate you want those people. Um, so consider before you delete a record, do you want to keep that record for history? Um, I know the first year I was working here, I had a lady, they were doing a, a huge historical um, writing, and they wanted to go back, you know, 50-some years, and I don't know if they have that many. We haven't been around 50 years, but I think they may have even put some of their old records in, and they were quite happy that they had uh, given those records an inactive status rather than deleting them because they had that for that historical thing they were doing. All right, so I'm going to maximize this just so it's as large as we can have it. If you look on your individual record, which let me get a drawing tool here. The individual record is over on the right, and where you want to look for the inactive field is within your actual individual fields. 
Now the order of the fields you see below that, you can go into customize fields and specifically change the order of your fields to, you know, what's most important to you up at the top versus bottom. Um, so your inactive field may not be in the exact same spot as mine. Let me just get my spotlight, then I don't have to erase drawing. Um, if we look, I see my inactive field is here in my second column. It's the second field. I have a little spotlight on it. Um, and if we look across, it's just a little checkbox with a field and a date with the field. And those are both grayed out. As soon as I put a check here, those will become active. And um, then I can fill those in. So let's go ahead and get my clicking tool back. I'm just going to move all the way over so we can see the end of that date field. So watch, if I go ahead and, well, actually, I wanted to mark, I had a specific person I wanted to mark inactive, the Bell family. I guess I could look for them with the person lookup. I just know they're like the third or fourth family. But here we go. We have the Bell family. Um, so we're going to go ahead and mark Bill as inactive. He passed away. So we'll just put a check in inactive. And now notice just to the right, both of the fields are active. I can click the down arrow here and see my list of different fields. Now again, this if you are a customer who was using a version prior to version 20, then in any of the versions prior to 20, this field was called reason for termination. Um, it is the same field when you updated to 20. All your codes and descriptions should still be there. Any dates you put in, any information you filled in for people already in that field, it's still there. The field just changed to be called inactive. And as I said, it functions a little different. You put a check here. I think it's really nice, though, in Streamline, though, that the reason that you're marking them inactive is right here. And along the same line is the date as well. Now watch, if I go ahead and choose my code of death, it automatically fills in today's date for me as when I mark them inactive. So if, if that's the date you want to keep, you can just leave that. Or I can click here, maybe he passed away last month, go ahead and mark the day that I need. And then I would just click save up at the top to save that. Now, marking someone inactive and Choosing the reason and filling in a date is pretty easy. If you don't want to put a date in, you could clear that out and then hit save. A date is not required, uh, but I think it's nice they've put it all along on one line instead of separate fields, you know, one right after the other, where it may not even be one right after the other in your records, depending on your order. This way, they're right here together where you can see them all and find them quite easily. And if you forget to fill in a date, it will go ahead and fill that date of today in for you. Or as I said, you could put it to nothing if you don't want to put a date. Uh, but you can search on those dates. And for some churches, that's very important. Um, some churches have to record at the end of the year how many people uh, were marked inactive or formally terminated due to death um, within that year So or any of those other reasons. So having that date there, we can also not only search on people who've been marked inactive for a certain reason, but then also put in a date range and get just people who are marked inactive during that date range. And it also tells us right here, if you don't know parts of the dates, you can put question marks for those. All right, let's look though, um, if you are looking at all at the material in the book, I'm looking at, like I said, M102, and on page uh, eight, um, there's a few things you wanna consider after you terminate a person or family. Now, I, I only showed you how to terminate one person. I forgot there's a way easily now we can terminate a whole family. So I'm going to find, let's find a big family here. Here we wanted, I wanted the Bernard family. The Bernard family has left the church. <clears throat> they transferred to another church. And I see Carl asking a question here. I'm going to get to that, Carl. If you just wait just one minute, I'm going to show everybody all the different things we need to do to the records. Um, after you mark somebody terminated. But I, I want to show you before that how we can mark an entire family terminated. So I will answer that question in just a moment. <laughs> um, I, I forgot I was to show you how to mark the whole family. I was about to answer or go right into that, but I need to show you this. Um, if you look and if a whole family leaves, if you look in the upper left on the actual family tab, there's a big button here, make family inactive. I think this is so slick. It's so 
fast now. I can just, if this whole family's left the church and I want to mark every individual inactive, I can just click this button, make family inactive. It tells me this will make all active individuals of this family inactive and will assign them the reason and date below. So now I can choose, they left the area. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and say that it told us last Sunday. And once I put in my reason and my date, or I can X out, I don't have to put a date, then I click OK. And now notice, I see up at the top, it says family inactive. And if you look below it, each of our family members, they're showing in red. And that is an indication just at a glance to you that that person has been marked inactive. Um, we also can see up at the top of Evan Bernard's record, his individual record on his first tab, uh, we see it's in red and it also says in active. If I click the down arrow here up at the person list, notice we see people in red. Got a slew of red there because um, I just marked a bunch of B, people with Bs as inactive. Um, but we see people in red in the list, and that means that's an inactive person. So it's a little easier to look up inactive people now. Um, they will show in red in that list, and we can go right to them. All right. Let's now, whoops, let me go back to the Bernard family and just show you real quick that, indeed, it did mark every single one of those persons inactive. Oops, not Dylan. He's transferred out. Wrong Bernard. Let's go to Eric. <laughs> there we go. All right, so if we look, click on Evan. We see over to the right, left area, date of 6-3. And if, if I click on each of these, we see each of them has the same inactive reason and date. And we were able to mark all four of those individuals in the family inactive with just that one mark family inactive button. All right. Now, there are a couple things you want to look at on the records when you mark. Um, if a family leaves, there's really nothing you need to do. If you've marked a family inactive, um, doing that prevents people from showing on a directory unless you specifically say you want you know, inactive people. Um, but you don't really need to change anything on the family's record if you've marked them all inactive. I wouldn't um, change their status. Even if you've just marked one person inactive, I would leave their status um, as is. If you change their status to inactive, then you are not going to have any idea what their actual relationship was to the church when they were with the church. Um, marking them with a status, or I'm sorry, a status code, I would leave just their status code alone and giving them that inactive reason over on the right um, or wherever it is in your records, um, that's going to keep them off of your reports and your list and labels. Now, some churches have an actual status code of inactive. Often, a lot of churches do. Marking someone with the status code of inactive is not going to mark the inactive field. That's completely different from the actual inactive or firm, formerly reason for termination field. So that might be a little confusing. Um, just as long as when, if you call and you have questions about that, you, you mentioned you know, you're talking about status code versus the actual field called inactive. All right, let's look at the different things you do want to do when somebody leaves the church or a family leaves the church. Um, if the entire family leaves, we mark them all inactive with that one button. Um, if a single family member leaves, we can mark them inactive. And then we want to look at some different things. Um, first, I'm going to look at page 8. If a family member dies, um, then there's a couple things you want to do. Let me go back to the Bell family. Bill passed away, but Donna, his surviving wife, still is a member of our church. So we want to first take a look at the mailing label. Um, and I would ask the parishioner, what do they want their mailing label to say? Don't just assume that the woman wants it to have her name. Some women may not want people to know they're you know, living alone and want the mail address just to them. Um, so it might be good just to check. Um, we checked, and she's okay with that, so she wants hers to go to Mrs. Donna Bell. So we're just going to click up in the mailing label and edit that to uh, reflect the change. <clears throat> Also, the directory report order is important here. We don't need to change Bill's directory report order because we've marked him terminated. Or I'm sorry, we've marked him inactive. It's still going to take me a while to get used to not saying terminated. Uh, we've marked him with an inactive reason of death. Um, so he's not going to show in the directory. 
But if we look, get the spotlight here. Um, Donna is marked as secondary, and we need to change her to primary because to have a family show in a directory, you have to have one person listed as primary or no one will show at all. Um, so by marking her primary, she now will show in the directory, whereas if we left her at secondary, she was not going to show at all. Um, our family relation. It's a good idea. We might want to have a family relation of widower and deceased. Um, for Donna, we can click under family relation and change her to widowed widower. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we can click on Bill, and we can change his family relation. Oops, I thought we had one. Oh, it's up here. We can change him to deceased. And now when I click Save, notice, <clears throat> hmm. okay, now it's telling me there's already individuals with a directory report order one. Reports will not work correctly if there's more than one primary designated. Um, we have to ask the programmers about that because normally changing this isn't something we need to do. Um, so I don't know if that has changed. Um, because he is marked inactive, this should not affect the directory at all. <clears throat> so I just said yes, and we'll just remove his for now. <clears throat> and remove him from the directory there. So we'll click Save there. Um, now the marital status, that's also no. And we'll just change him to secondary. It's going to give me a hard time there. That's odd. When I pr tried it earlier, it worked just fine. Maybe I did it in the opposite order. All right, so marital status, if you track that, we'd want to, um, we don't need to change that. Um, the program looks for two individuals marked primary and secondary, not marked an active to actually pull a marriage date. So with only one spouse as an active um, person in this record, a marriage date will not be pulled for the anniversary report. Um, now, if there's a picture on the record, then we might want to remove the picture or ask if they have a newer picture. So we can click on the photo tab, and um, Donna has indicated to us that she'd like to just uh, give us a newer picture of just herself. So we'll just clear the picture so we don't accidentally print that um, until she gets us a new picture. All right. I'm trying to think. Um, let me look and see if I missed anything. All right, I think that's about all I wanted to show you. Let me look at the questions and see if we have any questions. Um, somebody said, should the deceased person status code be changed to deceased rather than inactive? Um, well, actually, I would leave his stat the status code what it was when they left the church. So that way, historically, you know what status they had with the church when they did come to church. Um, so no, I would not change their status code to deceased. I mean, you can if you'd like, but we recommend keeping their status as is so you know what their status was when they were there at the church. Um, someone said, is there a way to change someone from active, inactive to active? Yes, you just... All we do is uncheck the inactive box and click Save. Now if we look back, we see Donna and Bill are both active people. So all you do is find their record and uncheck that little checkbox. Um, someone said they don't understand my comment about marital status. Um, I don't know what comment that was. Uh, marital status, um, there's an anniversary report you can run, and that anniversary report looks at um, the marriage date, so that wouldn't be marital status. Um, oops, let me see. I mean, marital status, we can change that. I'm not sure why we have all these extra codes in here. We didn't have them on mine at my desk, I'm sorry. Um, for marital status, I think I might have missed that, I'm sorry. Um, marital status, we can change bill. Let me mark him back as death because we took that away. So, Bill, I'm sorry, we went over time. Um, if you need to leave, you can go ahead and exit the room, but I'm going to stick around and answer the rest of the questions that are here. Uh, marital status, we just go 
to Bill. We can mark him. Oops. We, we can create a code of um, deceased if we'd like to mark him with a marital status. Uh, Donna Bell, I think, is what we would probably mark, though, as widow widower. And then save that for her. Okay. Somebody said, when an individual is inactive, can donations and or attendance be recorded in their name? Um, yes, you can. If we go, whoops. I open up donations. And then I go to enter donations. Um, just above here, if I check inactive, and then I put a date in. Now if I look for Bill Bell, I can select that inactive person and go ahead and enter a donation for him. Um, and then for attendance, I go to attendance entry, the same thing here. I can choose what I need and choose my date. And then right above the search box, I can look for inactive people. So yes, you can do both of those for inactive people. Someone said, I'm confused. You said anniversary report uses marriage date and status code. I'm sorry, no. The anniversary report uses marriage date, and it looks for a primary and a secondary directory report order. If it does not see a primary and secondary person, meaning a husband and wife or partners, um, then it will not put that couple on the anniversary report. So it looks for um, the marriage date, and it looks for a primary directory report order and a person with a secondary directory report order, meaning a couple. <laughs> so no, the status code doesn't do that. Um, but if you've marked either the primary or secondary person as inactive, then it won't see them for that anniversary report, and it won't pull the just the one person onto that report. Someone said, I have some inactive that come to worship and want to put in their attendance, and they don't show up. Okay. Um, you might need to give us a call. Um, I would, in attendance entry, see if you uh, uncheck groups and classes and see if that um, event comes up. If not, it sounds like you might have them in as um, you might have created a group or class. Notice here, if I check inactive and look for Bill. Whoops. Well, we can see him right below. There's Bill Bell. I have him highlighted. He's showing in my uh, attendance entry. If I uncheck inactive, he's not showing. Uh, but notice, just look right there by Donna. As I'm going to check inactive. Whoops, and it moved on me. <laughs> if I go back up here, there's Bill right above Donna. So if they've been marked inactive and it's actually an event, then they will show if you check inactive. If it's, if, if you've mistakenly created your event as a group or class, people have to be assigned to that, and that might be why they're not showing. But um, I would definitely give us a call about that if you need to. Um, OK, yeah, give us a call, Cheryl, because, yeah. All right. Well, Ross is getting all these questions. Let me scroll back up and make sure I didn't miss any that maybe he didn't know the answer to or anything. If you have another question, go ahead and, while I'm looking here, go ahead and type that in. <clears throat> it looks like I got, oops, here comes one. After you're done, I would like to know. I'm sorry, Carl. I, after you're done, would like to know how the sure and status is used. Had not seen that before. Oh, how shut in it. How shut-in is used for status? I mean, it would if it's a status code, you'd, I'm not sure I understand if what you mean. I mean, there is a shut-in field you can use, but I... How the shut-in 
field is used? I don't. I guess I don't understand your question, Carl. <clears throat> Someone said we remove people by charge conference. That's not an option. Can I write that in? Um, sure, you can create your own codes by clicking. First, you have to click on inactive to open that field up, and then you can click the little pencil at the end of the line. And you could put in your code and your description and click plus to add that um, and have your new field. So yes, you can create new and active reasons if you need new ones. OK, I'm sorry, Carl. I'm, yeah. If you want to give us a call, I'm not sure what you're asking about. Um, I know sometimes we have a shut in field. But we're not even showing that currently. So if you could give us a call, I can, we can help you out on that. Okay, somebody said, if a person is marked inactive or deceased, will their donation information show up on the end of the report? If you check to include donation, um, if you check to include inactive people, then yes. So I, I'm guessing you mean the um, donation statement. So if we go to the statement on the givers tab if it's defaulted to have include inactive checked because typically you still want to send statements so as long as that's checked then people marked inactive will still get a statement so yes <clears throat> um, how do you print family page if a member has passed away um, you can click the little print icon whoops sorry a little printer icon here <clears throat> oops oh it wants me to save I'm sorry so you can click the little print icon. What is it wanting me to? There's something I'm missing here that I'm not doing. Save. What am I missing? Hmm. <clears throat> All right, so if I click the little print icon, then I can choose report or label and continue on to print the family side. You could do the same with the individual record as well. Okay. Okay. Somebody said, by leaving a person active, will they print when you run a report of members? And you cleared that up to say if they're inactive, but their status code is still active, not unless you check that you want people you've marked inactive to be on that report. That's why we recommend keeping their status code active, because typically you, you don't, you know, ask to have the piece in, for people you've marked with a reason for being inactive. Um, and that way you still have, you know, when if you look through your records of people you have marked inactive, you can see what their status was when they still were going to the church. So. Yeah, we recommend, and they won't show up on those reports unless, <clears throat> let me show you in reports, let's go to reports label, um, right here, let me get my spotlight, we have include inactive. If, if you ask for status code of active and you check include inactive here in the lower right, then yes, you would still get people who are, have a status code of active, but have been marked inactive. Uh, but as long as that little checkbox include inactive is not checked, then you're not going to get people you've marked inactive where you left, you know, their status is active. Um, do we have any pre-recorded webinars on how to transfer child's info when they get married? I don't know. Um, I'd have to, let me see, I can search our website. You know, next week I am doing one, <clears throat> my fingers are not working right, individual. <laughs> so yeah, there's transfer of individuals and families, version 20 and newer. If you just search for that, those keywords on the website, that would bring up that movie for you. All right, are there any other questions? Or did I miss any? I Pretty sure I scrolled through. <laughs> oh, good. <clears throat> I missed yours. OK, I'll scroll back up. I'm sorry. I thought Ross had gotten everybody.
Huh. Oh, okay. I, I thought looks like Ross answered your question. Um, unless I, unless it's a different one, Wendy. I said, can we reuse the donation number from a terminated person? Um, and he said, yes, you have to remove it from them using managed numbers, but yes. As soon as you remove it from one person, you can add it to another person. Unless that was, I don't know if it was a different question. That's the only question I see that you ask, Wendy. <clears throat> if it was something different, could you please uh, retype it for me? Um, someone asked, what would be a reason to terminate an entry? I've been cautioned against terminating an entry. Um, well, it's actually called marking it inactive now. Um, if somebody passes away, somebody moves away, um, somebody just quits going to the church, um, you know, any reason you don't want that person to show up on your reports and lists and labels, but you want to retain their actual data, I would mark them with an active reason. And that way you still have their information, <clears throat> but it's not going to pop up on all your reports and your labels and all over the program unless you specifically check you want to see um, an inactive person. Um, how do we move a terminated person's number? Wendy, if you could give us a call. Um, we can show you how to do that. We're, we're going way over time here, though, and we're kind of getting uh, moving off to other topics. Um, all we're talking about here today really is that inactive field and how to use that field. But if you give us a call or email, we'd be happy to give you more information on uh, numbers and working with the numbers over in donations. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me see. There might be. I mean, there is a video about managing givers. Um, if you go to the Manage Numbers screen within donations and hit F1, that will bring up information. Um, but if you give us a call, we'd be happy to help you more with that. It's just we're going, we've gone almost 15 minutes over our time, and, and we would like to keep you know, to the topic. <laughs> so are there any other questions about that inactive field in the member database, or the membership database? <laughs> I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. If you have a question, you're in the middle of typing, go ahead and hit enter. <clears throat> and that way I'll know you're still typing and I'll hold off on ending the class. And you're welcome. You're very welcome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Um, if you had another question or something, you know, a different topic, definitely call or email us, or if something wasn't clear, give us a call. Um, I take lunch at 2, so I'll be back on the phone for just a little bit, and then I'm going to lunch if you specifically request me. Um, I'll be back after 3, um, but lots of text, no membership, and going to help with it if you need more help. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. And I'm sure I'll talk to you on the phone someday in the future. Bye.